You're watching the Catholic Family Podcast, and I'm very happy to be joined today by Father Stephen McKenna and doing a starting a series, as you say. It's something that I'm really super excited about, and it is a series about philosophy, and it's going to end up being kind of the errors of modern philosophy. But today, Father is going to be kind enough to give us kind of a, a brief brush up of, well, what is philosophy? You know, what we're, what, what, what does that actually mean? And Father is going to be as Father Father said in the kind of the, the run up to this, the prep to it is like you know you can really get into the weeds and you can really dig into every little nook and cranny of philosophy. But that's not the point I think of this show. Father wants to kind of do this in in lay terms, explain it to me like I'm five, which I often uh, my my brain acts like a five year old very often. So so we're gonna try to do this. Father's gonna try to dumb it down a bit for for me and for anyone else who needs it to be dumbed down and, and hopefully again have a good time and and and, and learn a lot. So Father. Thank you so much for, for doing this with me and, and uh, wherever you want to start. Oh, thank you. And um, I guess maybe just a, you know, just a real quick, uh, you know, uh, point to go along with that. Um, that is actually something that I've, I've always, philosophy has been something I've been interested in in a long time. I have a, I have a degree in philosophy in addition to uh, a bachelor's degree in philosophy, in addition to, to having studied at seminary, obviously. And um and something that I've always noticed from the outset, because once I really began to learn philosophy, learn about philosophy, was that I found that I ended up really liking it. And from the outset, I noticed, like, for most people, it was two, two extremes. And I, and I thought in their reaction towards philosophy. And, and I always thought that that was just, that was just unfair to, the, to, to what it is, because it's so important. Um, which is why I'm so glad we get to, to kind of do this a little bit. Um, one extreme being, for the most part, a lot of people thinking that philosophy is this, you know, super, you know, intellectual thing that <clears throat> is ungraspable and that they that um, that they're incapable of being able to study or would never even want to endeavor to study, um, and that's. Unfair. I think a lot of times it's terminology and shaping your brain to start delving into making distinctions and certain points and 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 focusing on particulars that that uh, takes a little bit of adjustment that scares people away. So yeah, I want to sort of with this dispel that have something that for the for the average person who most people don't today study philosophy, which is a bit of a shame um, that. Uh, that it is something that can be not only graspable, but we can even make it enjoyable as we go along. Uh, and it's also, as we get into the modern areas of philosophy, it's something that's very relevant um, to today and, and understanding the church, the crisis in the church, and understanding society and the crises we face in society as well. A lot of it stems from these philosophical um, modern ideas. Um, Secondarily, the, the other side to that coin, though, is that I see too often times that there's this other faction that has some knowledge of philosophy, but they make it almost appear to be an unreachable thing for the other side. Um, you know, so often I see, well, philosophy is, you know, a difficult science or it takes a long time to understand philosophy or, you know, whatever. And um, I also think that that's unfair. First off, it scares away the people that um, that are afraid to look at it. Secondarily, I think it's disingenuous um, because of the fact that it, it um, what it really shows is uh, either um, an insecurity in your own knowledge of the of how to you know, utilize philosophy or an uh, uh, and at least subconscious understanding that perhaps the argument that you're trying to defend is flawed because uh, the idea just to make yourself, well, I'm just smarter than you and therefore, and this is just too hard for you to understand and you can't grasp it. That's, right. that's not fair. And I think that's what we're going to try to do with this too, is to, that I think understanding any subject, the real test of it, and this is why it's sort of like an exercise and a, and a true test for me, um, is to be able to not explain it to the you know advanced classes of that subject that's easy for somebody who has a grasp on something it's to be able to to break it down and make it digestible for for the mass people and that's when you shows a comfort that shows um 
uh, an, an adaptability. And, and that's something that, um, like I said, hopefully will spur some interest in people to learn a little bit more, not be afraid to start delving into um, philosophy as, as a study, to understand um, how to operate logically, and to also understand and recognize where some of the problems in today society and uh in the church and everything like that come from so it makes sense father and it's something that i've looked a little bit into classical education and as far as i understand classical education kind of based its formation on first of all theology second of all philosophy and then they they learned the arts so you learned about god and then you learned how to reason and how to think and then you learned everything else and that makes a whole lot of sense to me and i think that that you don't see that much anymore right in education now it's you learn how to learn, you learn how to study, you learn how to memorize. And I think people, as we see in society, people have actually forgotten how to actually think. You know, and I, and I don't mean that just to be mean. I mean, like, to, how to actually reason and how to say, is this true or is it not, even if someone in somewhere tells me that it's true. Yeah, and I mean, for you, you went to a Catholic school, so you would have gotten this. And for me, I was public school educated, but I think I'm old enough to still have some aspect of it where we used to get problems um, in school for different classes and things that would be labeled as critical thinking problems. Mm -hmm. And, and that is an exercise in, in this, in the understanding of, of the, the philosophical sciences and, and, and that ability to, to reason your way through a problem, to reason your way to understanding a solution. We'll find in today's thing about the connections to how, you know, you know, it bases, you know, the idea of function in, in natural sciences and and just operation in daily life revolves around this. And so much today, things are based on feelings or in education settings, things are based on indoctrination. You know, it's it's easy to dictate to somebody and to to convince them to to have a worldview if there is no contrary, if there's no contrary ability to to use rationale to to, um, to to critique what has been has brought to people. That's why um, you know you can you know when you tell a small child something, uh, they take it on trust that their parents would always just tell them the truth. And the same thing happens to people as they get older. If you see an authoritative figure, the natural instinct of a man is to just trust that an authoritative figure, a teacher, a professor scientist doctor a politician uh that they are some sort of perceived authority and so therefore my inherent first reaction is to trust what they say not to criticize or to think about it in a in um in a you know just to, to compare the pieces to make sure it actually makes sense or not i just almost take it on a bit of trust or faith in that sense and so but in as we've seen over especially the last two years we cannot do that and expect to survive you know that's you know our world is tumbling down a hill really fast and it's largely because people do not exercise um reason very often and uh, or are incapable of doing so well um so I think that's, uh, you know, I think that's, you know, all, like I said, all of this is so pertinent to today's society. And like I said, nobody, nobody's saying you need to go out and get a bachelor's degree in philosophy or doctorate in philosophy or something like that. But to have it as a point of, like you said, it was always part of a education, this rounded education of, of, of using you know, being able to to use logic to be able to critically think. When you think of the uh, perfect example for that is when you think of the origins of the beretta of the priest. That um, it harkens back to really when you think of the that the early universities were combined universities, and so that you had your secular university students studying with your clerical university students for those initial stages of study, and when they finished their beginning studies, which was generally speaking like a philosophy type of type of uh, study, and they, they finished their philosophy, um, they would um, they would move on. And if they became clerics, then they began to wear the bread, a part of their clerical mm -hmm. wear for as a as a non-religious priest, as it were. And what has that become to us now? Is now 
broken down to us as as the roller board for graduation because mm-hmm. that's that's the origin of that it comes from that anybody seeking higher education they gained an education in philosophy because it really was an important aspect to branching off into all other areas of, of study in, 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 in higher education um, it facilitated all those things um, and so just sort of understanding it in that sense and then like I said being able to start to be desirous to, to, to dive into those areas is important. Well, and Father, then, I mean, I guess, where, where do you want to start? I mean, I imagine you want to probably start describing what philosophy is, but but I, I've not been given an outline from this. I, I'm We did that on purpose so that I am, like the viewers, trying to, you know, maybe ask questions that everyone else might have and whatnot. So I, I'm not prepared. Father is prepared. So so Father, wherever you want to start, I, I'm, I'm excited to, to get rolling. I hope I'm prepared anyways. <laughs> um, I'd like to start really at the very, very basic fundamental aspect of it. And that is, uh, and a good place to start in these things is etymology. You know, what does the word philosophy actually mean? What is it to, to be defined as? And um, it comes from the Greek uh, combination of two words. The, the philia, which is the Greek for, for love. And Sophia, which is the Greek for wisdom. And so it is essentially a love of wisdom as an etymological definition of it. It's believed that the very term philosophy, uh, at least legend states, that it comes from uh, the Greek uh, thinker um, Pythagoras, actually, as the one in the 6th century BC, potentially maybe having coined the term um so it's um it's recognized that um in that that man having by being a philosopher being a lover of wisdom it's recognized that man is incapable of obtaining full wisdom you know to to have like the, the the full grasp of all things in the realm of wisdom, but rather that he is a lover of seeking after and obtaining and and gaining in the study and knowledge um, and and, uh, this this idea of wisdom that uh, that somebody truly can't claim to be really wise, but rather to understand that they love to, to, to grow in wisdom. They love to, to seek after this, this, this wisdom. Um, in, 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 and that is their, their goal. Um, now that I think merits a further breakdown. First off, what is love? And then secondary, what is, what is wisdom? Love is, uh, we have to understand it from a true sense of the word, not, and a bit, uh, you know, philosophical sense, but it's a, but it also transcends into us as Catholics understanding uh, love. We don't mean it in the sense of virtue, you know, love of God above all else and love of neighbor as self, but we mean it in a, in at least a philosophical sense, apart from sentiments. We don't want it to be confused with sentimental ideas of love. So love, we have, but we have to understand, is truly an act of the will. It is a, a drive of the will towards an object. And so that, that meaning that I see something that I desire to either obtain or understand, and I work my way towards that thing. If you think about it in a relationship sense, you see a spouse or a potential spouse and you work your way towards obtaining them as a husband or a wife. And then once you've obtained them as a husband and wife, you work your way towards um, having a greater union with them day by day throughout your lifetime. If you think about it in terms of the physical world around us, you know, it could be towards some sort of achievement, some sort of physical uh, obtaining. But in this sense, we're talking about the, the drive towards wisdom when we talk about philosophy. And so wisdom is not, it, oftentimes we think of wisdom and we interchange it with understanding or knowledge. And that's a mistake. Knowledge is only a part of wisdom, but if we want to understand what wisdom truly is, wisdom is knowledge plus the ability 
and inclination of putting that knowledge to good use. So it's not enough to know something. It's enough, it's more so to 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 be able to and want to put it into good use. Per, uh, you know, again, if we use an example here, think about it's not enough to know God, like, you know, to know God exists, to know who he is, to know how he operates and things like that. It's a, that's part of it, right? But does not the devil know God, right? He has a knowledge of God far superior to our own knowledge of God, but he has neither the inclination or the ability to put that into a good practice. Uh, we, on the other hand, if we want to be wise in, 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 in our faith, we need to learn about the things of God in our, in our faith, and then we need to put it into practice, to, to begin to be virtuous, to strive after avoiding sin, to strive after increasing in, in grace and, and, and merit and virtue. That's the good application to strive to ultimately um, to work our way towards, towards God. Uh, and so there's a distinction there, knowledge versus wisdom, and that's a, an important thing. And so um so it's um so philosophy in a sense is some some total of things in general worth knowing and are working towards it now that's a very so like uh you know kind of um at a etymo etymological definition and i think it does a good job um i'll provide an additional just quickly definition from what the like a real definition could be from uh, this is from actually Monsignor Glenn who did it, wrote a series on philosophy uh, entire uh, series on philosophy he says that um, philosophy is the science of all things naturally knowable to man's unaided powers in so far as these things are studied in their deepest cause causes and reasons. Um, so, you know, again, philosophy is not to be confused with religion. Philosophy assists in religion, it aids in religion, and sometimes even overlaps with religion. But philosophy is only concerned about the natural aspect of knowledge and and its, and uh, and wisdom and its application, the things that we're to, to obtain through our own reason. So, so when you were in when you were in the seminary, for example, Father, you would have studied philosophy in some sort of theology, kind of simultaneously. Uh, actually, uh, the way it was laid out, at least for me, anyways, was that we. I know some places do that, and I think it's more because of the fact of um, need not 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 having an overabundance of of faculty. You know, because you have all these varying grades in there that mm -hmm. you would that you would necessarily say like, okay, well this year, one of the classes being offered is, you know, the first of moral theology. So therefore, you know, these, you know, these maybe top three or four years, they're going to all study it together, regardless of what order it came into. And I think there's some aspect of separation. Like I know that as a generality, um, I think most Holy Trinity tries to, I don't want to speak for on for them, but I think they try to do their best to keep like as a distinction philosophy students and theology students. Interesting. Uh, okay. As like a separation. Um, because and it was that way for me that philosophy came first. And yes, there was there was aspects of of you know things of you know church, especially but it was more like spiritual life stuff and it uh, and scriptural stuff and things like that rather than the science of theology because really having that basis in philosophy having the the basis in natural um wisdom and knowledge uh and that facility to use to be able to make formulate arguments and make distinctions and do that it really services and supports the study of theology mm -hmm. um so that so you know if you think of sort of theology be well there's a common phrase i don't necessarily know if it's 100 percent accurate but it's oftentimes but a simple simplistic idea that philosophy is the handmaid of theology that it mm -hmm. assists the understanding of, of theology and it's certainly true that it does because of the fact that um that it's you know theology is sort of like the supernaturally applied aspect of philosophy it combines revelation it 
combines study of, uh, of, of the entity of the church and the faith and things like that um, to philosophy, but philosophy is merely natural aspect. So you get the grasp on that because therein lies most of your principles to be able to, to be able to study the higher ed, higher things um, more easily and, and to understand them to a greater facility. Well, it's really interesting, Father, and I think that's a great example of how important philosophy is, right? I mean, that, that, that's, that's really, I think that's a beautiful thing to know as we begin this series to see how important to be able to make these distinctions. And as you say, you're learning this philosophy, you're learning the, the love of wisdom, you're learning how to think and reason before even learning about, you know, the theology and kind of your, your I, don't know, I want to say your primary studies of being a priest, but but in order to learn the primary studies of theology, you first learn philosophy. That that's a great, that's a really important thing to, to know. I think. Yeah, and and actually, you know, the thing about it too is like again, if we want to, you know, uh, to be able to put these things in more simple ideas, a lot of times use examples or analogies, right? And and that, and a perfect example of that is that you know, some of the things that we study in theology, we aren't able to use philosophy to obtain that knowledge of. Now, a perfect example would be the Holy Trinity. You know, I can use natural reason alone to come to the conclusion that there is one God. I can, without any aid of grace or revelation, I can come to that conclusion, and many have. And in fact, we'll, we'll see that in just a moment here, that most had um, originally. But I cannot use reason to... Uh, to come to the conclusion that God is three persons in one God. That's a mystery of our faith. That is a, something that is only made known through revelation to us. But what I can see in the, my, when I get to that point where I'm studying, what is the Trinity? How am I supposed to understand the Trinity? That when I come to something that is a mystery of our faith, I can see that while I cannot reason to this and I cannot fully grasp it in its entirety it at, at the same time what i'm learning now in theology does not contradict reason and so that's but if i don't have the the good use of reason i can't realize it doesn't contradict reason until i i have that foundation to build on. right interesting so um <clears throat> then um so with that, we, um, we come to, you know, really uh, kind of having this understanding of what it is. We're not philosophy, so it's just the study of man's love or desire to seek after wisdom and to grow in wisdom. It brings up a good point, which comes to... Um, it comes to serving what the purpose of the show is, which is why is it today when we look around in society, generally speaking, people do not operate, are not interested in philosophy. It's not something regularly taught. And we let off the show a little bit by saying, you know, there's the, it's simpler to indoctrinate and it's simpler to, you know, you know, encrust a message into somebody, some, somebody's mind or something like that. Which is true, but there's a greater reason to why that happens, why society allows it to happen, and and why we do not see so many people independently going on their quest to, to gain in wisdom. And that is directly tied with our faith, actually, because it is the effect of uh, original sin on mankind. So we have this I understanding of the soul, right? So man is composite being, body and soul. We know that they're joined together, united as one. Um, what is the thing? Uh, I'll put. I'll, I'll give you a quiz question, Kevin. What is the thing that separates man? What is the 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 the, the demonstrable thing that separates man from beast that uh, that we can see the thing that lets us know that we have an immortal soul a soul that is completely different than all the rest of the beasts around uh 
I guess I'd say the intellect or the will, right? The, the will to, to choose. The will is, is correct. So the fact yeah. that we have free will or i.e. what we will call it, what we'll say here, which is uh, perhaps a bit more pertinent is the, the ability, the, the use of reason, you know, that's, that's what separates us. When you look at all the animals, animals op in, operate in many ways similar to man that, you know, if you look at your, if you have a dog, you know, you, the, the dog does a lot of things that we do, but because, because it contains an aspect of its soul, that's it's animalistic soul. That is, that is similar to ours that, you know, motor function and, and action and even feelings and, um, uh, pain and pleasure and, uh, you know, uh, and appetites. It has desires, desires for food, desires for sleep, et cetera, but all natural desires, but they share them with us. What we have different is that we're able to reason and no other animal has that. Perfect example for it is that man can choose to fast if he wants to, meaning that he can be hungry and have a natural appetite for food. And if food is placed in front of him, he can choose to not eat that food because he has the ability to a free will and choice and the use of rationality to choose something for a higher end rather than a lower end. Um, the dog does not have that ability. He, if, you, if he is hungry and you place food in front of him, he will eat that food. Now, you can train a dog, meaning that he is more afraid of some sort of punishment to come or knowledge it has a remembrance of a greater reward if he you know if you get him to stay and not go after the treat right away that he knows that better treats and and you know pats and, and praise come along his way if he's you can train a dog but the dog doesn't make that choice on his own if you don't give him the prompt to stay if you don't you know train him in that that way he's hungry and you put a, a treat down the hallway he's going after that treat um, if not acted upon in some, some other way, man does not have that need because he has reason. He can choose to do one thing over another. And that use of reason, um, is really that uh, part of that image. And that is the, that image and likeness of God in man, that he is the higher quality of our immortal soul being operated. And that's where we see it made manifest in the world. Because of that, we have this combination of rationality and animalistic tendencies. And so the reason why I say that man today, largely speaking, doesn't seek after this gain of wisdom, this study uh, and, and striving after this, this increase, the, the knowledge and the, the, the science of philosophy, for instance, is because of the effects of fallen human nature. So, be, and in such, uh, the further away from from the garden we've gotten, the more in, more inclined we are to give into our natural tendencies, our base passions. Um, and when we do not exercise and regularly utilize reason over natural tendencies, this is why, as Lent's coming up. The idea of fasting and abstinence and penance and things like that are so important to the to the betterment of the Christian, because it strengthens our soul. It strengthens our willpower to to resist temptation. And if I can resist the things, if I can turn away from from things that are um, that are of themselves good, then when something that I know comes along that is evil and tempts me, I have a stronger inclination to turn away from. It. And so it's the same same idea because because um, we are, um, so the further away we, we man as a society, uh, men as society and, and just population in general, and the more it affects us, the further away we get away from that, the less inclined we are to do the hard thing and to search after wisdom and to try to increase in wisdom really does take, uh, is, is a great, it is a, is a constant use of our rationality and it is a rising up higher than what our natural base passions and inclinations are, which is easier for us to follow. 
So it's easier for man to seek pleasure. It's easier to, to just go after the, the base desires, the food, the sleep, the, the you know, whatever, the, the, the reward. It's, you know, we go to work because we get paid, not because there's some sort of higher end necessarily being followed in that, uh, you know, and as soon as works out, we are, you know, you know, what's the common man doing? Vegging out on the couch, watching television, you know, eating Cheetos, uh, you know, et cetera. And that's, that's, that simplicity, that sort of hedonistic aspect of existence, that has become more and more prevalent in society. And so less and less does man search for the higher plane. And the less they use rationality, the more easily it is to distract them from what really is going on in the world. Um, you know, that is why Last night was the perfect example. Well, they estimate probably like 150 million people tuned into the Super Bowl last night. Wow. You know, how many of those people went to church that that day? How many of those people, you know, took time to pray a rosary or listen to um, listen to this uh, additional sermon or listen to something from Trishal? from Catholic family podcast or read, read something, you know, to grow. It's not to say that you can't watch something as entertainment, but if that is like your whole, I mean, most people planned out their entire day to be that they were, they, you know, it was making food. It was doing, you know, setting up things to have a big old party and everybody come over and then sit and watch flashing lights all day long and pregame, postgame, everything not once did they strive for something higher in themselves. Well, when I think too, uh, sorry, Father, I, I think it's it's really interesting because I think you see too the hedonistic, the more hedonistic, the less hap the less happy, right? And I think that that's really interesting that you know they they become more worldly and more more animalistic and less happy, and so that their instinct then is to become more and more hedonistic and more animalistic rather than saying, okay, wait, what I'm doing something wrong, something in my life is wrong and instead of seeing that okay we need to go to god and we need to seek wisdom and truth they sit more on the couch and eat more cheetos i think and i think that's and i i mean i've done it so I, I mean it's not like it's not like i'm the perfect example over here but but i think it is it's interesting and, and, and so so father do you think is that especially a a an issue of our time or has that been an issue since since the it, beginning of man again and th i think if you think of it from from fall to now and you have aspects where you know, there were shifts because of greater influences in society, you know, when, when the faith, you know, you know, you had men move away from God and rationality till you got to the flood. And then the flood comes in and, you know, things got a lot more clear again, you know, and, you know, the same thing would be said to like, uh, you know, the, 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 um, the Jews wandering in the desert in Egypt and then finding the promised land, you know, they probably would have been more inclined to, to be, you know, to, uh, to be searching after things of God once they reached the promised land. And, and, and then they were, when they were ju just, you know, hanging out in Egypt um, or before what led up to them being able to be captured in Egypt. Uh, you know, so there, and then when, when we see it in the church too, you know, when I'm sure that when the, when, uh, things in, in society probably became pretty hedonistic and base. And then all of a sudden the plagues came to, to, to Europe and, you know, a third of as high as a third of the population is dies off in a right. relatively short period of time. Guess what? You know, when there's nothing else, people start realizing they need to turn back to God again. Um, you know, the Protestant reformation culminates in the council of Trent and this reforming the church and everything like that the unintended reformation on the protestants part there theirs was a, you know a corrupted idea of reformation but the fact that the protestant reformation happened was because there was so much uh, you know there were so many rampant problems in society and the church as a whole that it allowed it to take place and then trent comes around and fixes a lot of those problems and you start to have this resurgence so it's always ebbed and flowed, but if you look at it as a general whole uh, timeline from 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 Adam and Eve to now, I would say there's probably a steady decline in um, in man's interest in in having the higher versus the lower functions becoming more hedonistic. 
and certainly of our modern times, that has absolutely been true. And it's all culminated now in, I mean, just how easily man is, man forgets about, you know, horrible abuses that have come his way. I mean, 2020 and onward is the perfect, it's like, it's like taking what usually happens in decades worth of time and, and shrinking it down into this tiny little microcosm as to why it's effective in society today, because we're so far gone. Um, to see that, you know, they, we literally had an entire world shut down business and operation and, you know, kill small companies and lock you in your home and change your entire way of life by force, stripping you of basic human rights. And then guess what? We, as a society, we ignore huge amounts of those abuses remaining because the sports back again so easily distracted and then you heard everybody say oh we're back to thank goodness we're back to normal what about today is normal in comparison to five years ago it's not um and so it's we you know we suppress that so much that it's it, you know that we it takes very little to 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 bring us back to those hedonistic simple based desires and and that's that uh you know i remember i had a i had a friend of mine who worked overseas as a military contractor in afghanistan and he talked about some of the people there because people oftentimes think of islam as you know there's two there's two polarizing opposite ideas of you know what you know islam and the people of the middle east and things like that there's like this americanistic idea that uh, is false that they're all terrorists and we should bomb them all and wipe them off the face of the planet and you know that's foolish and then there's this liberal idea that you know they're all just wonderful and these are just a few radical extremists and and that's foolish too but in the middle is where islam actually is and the operation in various cultures of of muslims and some of their gross um violations of basic natural laws in their society that never gets reported by either of those two sides um and uh, how much in their societies by allowing this sort of like sharia reign and, and everything that's taken place they've completely moved away from absolute truth and, and, and suppressed reason that he was explaining to me that there would be people hit by cars almost every day in the city because they would be walking and they go, oh, I have to get across the street. And like a deer, they just turn and go across the street without looking. And he said it was remarkable to see, or people would load up the top of a bus after the inside was full, and people would fall off the bus on a regular basis. And it was like this basic aspect of self preservation was so diminished, which is part of higher thinking, because. Uh, because they had, you know, they had so far moved away from not even following natural law. And, you know, and look at us now. I mean, we can't, we've moved so far away from obeying the things of natural law. I mean, the Ten Commandments, the things ingrained on man's heart from the beginning, that we can't even, like, tell what a boy or a girl is anymore. And, you know, we're in the same boat. You know, we've also suppressed self-preservation to an extent that is obscene. You know, that, I mean, think about it now. How many times you see school shootings or suicides or murder suicides and things like that, you know, it's one thing to, it's natural to be angry and ang even angry enough to, to take somebody's life. It is completely contrary to nature to just be like, you know, I'm just going to end my life. You know, it takes a serious level of depression and desperation to get oneself into that position. It's why most people are afraid of heights, because naturally we don't we don't want to fall from the from the ladder. You know, and um, but but when we we've, we've suppressed this higher aspect to it, then as soon as something gets hard, then it, every time things get difficult, people just look for instantaneous relief, instantaneous solution whether it's good or bad and and instant gratification and if that means well if i can't find that in like the 20 seconds i look around my desk to figure out if there's a magic pill for this that's why 
you know, three quarters of society took an untested, unproven new scientific genetic experiments in, in, you know, as a solution to a non pandemic pandemic was because, well, the problems here, if we just take this thing, it'll go away. And that was a na narrative painted to them. And so they did. And, um, and, and it's the same thing. If we can't find the solution sitting right around us immediately, then, well, maybe it's just not, I maybe I just shouldn't even be here anymore. I'll just, that'll take away the pain. And, and that's why it's become so prevalent now is that it's, it's no longer left to those either psychologically damaged or, or people who are truly at the end of the rope of true desperation. It's just become sort of like the, the you know, new, new solution of a lot of problems in life. And, um, and it has to do with this idea of the, su the suppression of rationality, I think, um, the, as we move away. But it also, but on the inverse, getting back to the topic, that's why you don't see people striving after better application of, of their own ra reasonable reasoning abilities to, because it's like, it's like training for something. It's, it's hard to do. You have to take the time to read and study and to, to think and reflect upon it and, and decipher and make distinctions and, and, and make your way through that courseway. That's where the difficulty comes in. And at a certain point, people are like, well, the words are just too big. I don't want to do this. And, and so philosophy goes by the wayside. It's why most of us don't speak multiple languages because, you know, it used to be, what was the sign of education if you, in the early days, it was, you know, earlier on few hundred just a few hundred years ago if you were educated you spoke you were able to speak latin like in conversation you know and it was regular for people to to also obtain knowledge of french uh, you know and and spanish and, and things like that i mean it's still where you are in in, in europe obviously it's more more so that people still know other languages because of the fact that their neighbors speak a different language but but you know for population as a whole this knowledge of other languages that aren't necessarily applicable just because well if i go drive an hour away i walk into somebody speaking in, uh, this language but rather you know hey it'd be good for me to know for greater facility and in, in learning to learn other languages why it, it, i remember bishop sanborn saying to me one time years ago he said that uh any dummy can learn a language. It's all about discipline. You know, it's language learning isn't super difficult. It's, it just is tedious, boring, and takes a long time. And if you can be disciplined enough, you could, and spend enough time studying it, you can learn it. But most people don't have the discipline to sit down to actually go through the flashcards or take the time to, to, to start, start, you know, pulling apart grammatical structures and things like that. And, and that's why they don't learn them. So, well, I guess that's part of part of again the reason for this for this entire series is to express again the issues with with modern philosophy and, and how it has affected the world, but also to yeah get people interested in in learning again, right? Go go and go and you know try to learn how to how to better reason and learn the I, basics of of logic. Okay. I think that's the thing about it. It's you know that's why I feel the etymology is is so necessary. Because that understanding of philosophy at its very base level being a love of wisdom means that it applies across so much in the area of 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 improving self improvement in in the way of it's seeking tr things of truth it's seeking better understanding of the natural world around us and and all of that and uh, and so you can apply that to to science mathematics you could apply it to language you can apply it to uh, culture, cooking, uh, everything, it, putting yourself out beyond to understand something that you didn't under, understand before, to have a better grasp of, of, of what something is and then being able to apply it to your daily life. That's, it all sort of connects back to philosophy. And I'll use that as a springboard to sort of get back on track here as we, as we go. Um, so, but yeah, it, it, that lack of desire to, to do so and to overcome our passions, it, it comes from um, um, from that. And and really, there's a good um, when we get to to scholasticism, uh, you know, like at the end of, of this, um, there's a good distinction that our the church's form of philosophy, scholasticism, 
he makes for this is, it's like an acto primo and an acto secundo the the primo is the the capability and the secundo is the the putting into action we all have the capability to 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 increase but few actually do so a, a baby has the uh has the ability to walk but it's only when he puts it he actually starts taking steps that he's taken the active secundo that he's taken that second action um and begun to put it into practice and walk but from there there's there's a myriad of great increase that he can go he can go from walking to running to jumping to playing hopscotch to ice skating and ultimately to becoming you know a, an olympic sprinter if he you know the, the potentiality to grow and increase in that there is no real ceiling. There's no limit to it. You can get better at whatever you're doing always. And the same with philosophy, that understanding of the world around us, understanding uh, that, that wisdom that we can, that we love and we seek after. There's no ceiling to it. There's only increase. Uh, and so it can be, a, it's a lifelong endeavor if we really have that love and that desire to, to, to increase in that way. And ultimately, it, like I said, it does connect back to, to God.